Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Welcome back to the ninth installment in our Age of Worms series, as today we take a look at the Library of Last Resorts. As I mentioned, it's the ninth installment of the Adventure Path and is designed for a group of 16th level characters. Uh, this appeared in Dungeon Issue number 132 from March of 2006, and this is easily my favorite installment in the entire campaign. Uh, this is the one that I had the most fun running, and this is the one that I think had my players the most angry with me at the uh, at the end of the adventure. But uh, just taking a look at it here, this picks up right after the Prince of Red Hand adventure with the players at the dinner party having made contact with the noblewoman Lashona. She mentions that uh, the players can meet with her at her private residence <clears throat> the following day, so that's essentially where this begins. Now, Lashona doesn't waste any time sort of getting right into the, uh, the meat and potato of things, uh, and she has some information for the party. So the party has been tracking the wizard Balakard. Uh, he is a mutual uh, acquaintance, of the you know the the smartest man in Diamond Lake and the and the mentor there, so they've been following this wizard through a few different locations, including the Spire of Long Shadows back in the Cauldron region where the original Shackled City Adventure Path took place. Uh, they also followed Balakard to the city of Alhaster as well. And knowing that the that Balakard had made contact with Lashona. Now Lashona mentions that Balakard has gone off to a place called Wormcrawl Fissure, seeking out the Dracolich Dragotha. Now she also mentions that Dragotha is one of uh, Caius's most powerful lieutenants and is instrumental in trying to usher in the Age of Worms. Now, Lashona had mentioned to Balakar that he should wait before going to Wormcrawl Fissure, because when dealing with a lich of any sort, um, including like this version of the Dracolich, uh, they have what's known as a phylactery, and the phylactery houses the soul of the creature if it's destroyed and will cause it to reconstitute after a period of time. Lashona had cautioned Balakard against going to the Spire of Long, or not Spire of Long Shadows, Wormcrawl Fissure, without having uh, the the phylactery in their possession first or knowing where it is in order to destroy it so that if Dragoth is defeated, that he simply won't just reconstitute after a few days. However, he did not listen to reason and he went off on his own. So Lashona is trying to get the player characters to do essentially what she failed to convince Balakard to do, which was to find the location of the phylactery. Unfortunately, <clears throat> all information about the phylactery has been lost to time, including like the fact that not even Dragotha knows where the phylactery is, which is why Dragotha has essentially been pretty low-key throughout most of the adventure path, because he's unaware of its location or if it even is still something that exists. But the Lashona knows how the players can find that information. They have to travel to an island, Tilgos Island, to find the Library of Last Resort. <clears throat> now, Tilgos is actually an island that is protected by a group of uh, druidic guardians, or elemental guardians. Uh, and the players, when they arrive there, they simply can't just find the information that they need. They have to pass several tests in order to actually be allowed to gain access to the library itself. Now, these things include dealing with some cultists that have entered the island, uh, cultists that actually worship the god Vecna, um, and also like getting the uh, the feather of the Rock King, this like gigantic bird that lives on the island, as well as a few others. Now, the tasks themselves were okay, uh, to go through, there's like dealing with a with a, a large boule, um, all kinds of other things along those lines as well. But for the most part, the most in, uh, interesting encounter on this part of the of the task is dealing with the Vecna cultus. Now, as far as the trials go, the Rock King has actually been slain by the Vecna cultus, uh, meaning that they can the players can still retrieve a feather. However, the the Rock was still you know. Uh, killed in the first place, even if the player characters are able to resurrect or to re raise the dead on the rock, that's still going to affect them a little bit later on here. But again, what's really cool about the Vecna cultists is that their leader, this priest by the name of Darl Quethos, actually has in his possession the Hand of Vecna. 
So this campaign is full of artifacts compared to like the previous uh, adventure path, the Shackled City, which really didn't have any um, that the players would find, especially none as iconic as pieces of the Rod of Seven Parts and like the Hand of Vecna. There's the, the Talisman of the Sphere that they have as well, which will allow them to control a Sphere of Annihilation if that should come into play at any point throughout uh, the process of the campaign. <clears throat> and yeah, the Hand of Vecna. So there's a lot of stuff that the players uh, have to deal with in terms of like these legendary artifacts. And it was just kind of really, really cool to see. Now the players, if they go through all the trials, they defeat the like the behemoth, which we saw uh, artwork for here, sort of bursting out of the side of a mountain. I think I can find that again, hopefully. Hopefully I can find it. I know it's there. But anyway, uh, they deal with that if they're able to, um, you know, get retrieve a feather from the Rock King, do everything that was asked of them. There's the, uh, there's like the behemoth creature, <clears throat> the nightmare beast sort of coming out of the, uh, the mountain there and dealing with the cultists, the protectors of the, the, the library are still not super keen on letting the information that's contained within become uh, known because once it's known to the players, like once the, the essentially the magical seal that's protecting this knowledge from entering the world, uh, once the players break that seal, it's known potentially by anyone that's trying to find it. So like locate objects, uh, spells like that will now be able to find it. Uh, Dracotha may be able to be physically, like, spiritually aware of where his phylactery is. And one of the uh, the wild guardians or the wild watchers that's protecting this location uh, does not want that information to be shared, doesn't want that information to be known. So he actually challenges the players to a, to a single combat, trial by combat, which even though the players have done all the things that they wanted to do, and he used the death of the Rock King as one of like the major reasons why he doesn't think that the players... Are worthy, even though really it's just the fact that um, he doesn't want that information to become known. Uh, but still, the the Wild Watcher has the right to do that. The others uh, will adhere to that decision, and the battle begins. If the players are triumphant, then the Wild Watcher will actually gift the players uh, the, his elemental standards. So he can uh, each of the players or can choose one of the four elemental standards that he has if they so choose. But once they learn, once they defeat the Wild Watcher, once they've completed the trials and dealt with the Vecna cultists, it's time to find the location of Dragatha's uh, phylactery. And for that, they have to go to the Fountain of Dreams. So that's actually where all the information is kept. Like the Library of Last Resort is the name of the adventure and the name that I've been using. But the information is actually contained within this fountain. The players will have to drink of it. When they do so, they find themselves transported to a battlefield with hundreds upon thousands of undead creatures, uh, mostly spawns of Caius and other more powerful Caius-based uh, undead are trying to attack as this order of druids is attempting to secret away Dracotha's phylactery. Now, during the fight, the players do notice that Lashona, the noble that they had seen before, uh, she actually is present at that location as well. And she speaks with the druids <clears throat> who implore her to buy them time to get this phylactery sealed away. Now, she can do that because, as it turns out, she is actually a silver dragon that had taken humanoid form to speak with the player characters and to have her persona in the city of Alhaster. So she transforms into a silver dragon, takes to the skies, and engages in an epic battle against the Dracolich Dragotha. While this is happening, um, the hilltop that they're on uh, with this cave that they're trying to seal uh, Dragotha's phylactery in is being set upon by dozens of uh, Caius undead. Swords of Caius, Caius knights, and some other worse creatures um, can also be part of this particular encounter, including the Boneyard of Caius, this massive, like, snake-like creature that's just made out of just hundreds upon thousands of bones and from like various corpses this thing this fight was absolutely brutal and what ended up happening as the player characters were engaged in battle many of them they ended up dying one after the other like this was uh, basically a tpk scenario 
with nobody surviving. As the last player character fell um, to the, you know, fell to the ground, fell to his death uh, at the hands of these Caius undead, they did see that the druids were able to seal away the phylactery, but they also noticed that Lashona was killed by Dragatha and her corpse plummets to the ground. Uh, just as the last player falls into the sweet embrace of death. Or do they? Because once the information has been gained, once all the last character had fallen, uh, after all of that had taken place, the players reawaken on Tilagos Island to find that the storm that surrounded it, that prevented uh, most people from a being able to even set foot on the island, has disappeared. The uh, the fountain and the building that surrounded it, uh, that was once in immaculate condition when the player characters were there with the Wild Watchers, uh, has now fallen into centuries of ruin and decay. And the player characters stand there alone, with no none of the Watchers left, no other creatures left on the island either. But they do have the knowledge of where Dragatha's flattery can be found, and that will play in to very much to the next installment of the adventure path. So yeah, this was this was again one of my favorite uh, adventures to run here. And I know I kind of glazed over uh, some of the things. It's just like some of the creatures that the players uh, had to deal with in some of the trials. They weren't necessarily required to overcome all of the trials, just a certain number of them. And I know they went for the uh, the rock king feather. Uh, the cultists and dealing with the uh, the nightmare beast were the ones that they went through when I was running this campaign. But there were a few other encounters here uh, as well for them to go through. And again, this is kind of a short and sweet adventure, um, but has like my all time favorite moment. And the best thing about like this particular adventure ending is like it did result in a TPK, and my players. Uh, were not happy because I didn't explain to them like what happened. Once their character had died in combat, then that was it. No, I didn't give them any other uh, information. Even letting it linger a little bit after the last player character had been defeated uh, before I let them finally know that, no, you just, you reawaken. But it does raise some interesting questions. Like, were the players actually there? Were they transported back in time? Or were they witnessing this through the eyes of others? Like, they still recognized each other as themselves uh, in this scenario. And Lashona, like, didn't recognize them at the time, but she did seem to recognize them when they were at the, uh, the the dinner party for the Prince of Alhaster there. So it raises questions, like, were they actually teleported back in time? Were they physically there? Or was this just, like, memories that they were reliving? But it also raises questions about Lashona herself, because... She had very clearly died in that fight, yet here she is. So was she resurrected, or is there more to it? I don't want to spoil it here, because it will become important later on. Um, but it's just, like, another sort of question that, you know, needs to be asked. And, uh, yeah, I just had a lot of fun running this. Like I said, it was just a really, really cool uh, adventure. The, the idea of, like, the fountain, uh, because a few years ago I did a video about having players, if they're doing like researching an historical event, uh, letting them do some research and then make a knowledge check and then actually have them play out a scenario uh, based off of like how good their check was and sort of gaining information from it. And part of it was inspired by drinking from the fountain and being taken back um, to, you know, centuries before uh, dealing with the, uh, the the first attempt at ushering in the Age of Worms. The other thing about that encounter, though, it just shows how serious uh, it actually is, like how much of a threat, how much of a danger the Age of Worms actually presents to the world. And having the player characters that had really had a pretty, I'm not going to say an easy time uh, going through the campaign so far, but this was the first like major uh, instance of like the PCs just not being up to the task. And uh, it just kind of hammered home the point that the Age of Worms is not something to be taken seriously. And this is a really great way to start the end game of the campaign. So, like I said, they were a little bit mad at me <laughs> because of what had happened. But hey, they got the hand of Vecna, they got a major artifact, and they learned the location of the original Undead Dragon's Flactory. 
uh, that they can use in the next adventure to find it and destroy it to prevent Dragatha from being able to reconstitute. Anyway, that was my look at the Library of Last Resort. Let me know in the comments below if any of you had played through this part of the campaign. What were your experiences? Did your group actually manage to defeat the Caius invasion, the, uh, the, the bone worm of Caius and all the Caius knights on the hill? Were they able to overcome that? Or were they defeated by it like my group was? And what was their reaction if that was the case? Anyway, thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Until then, take care.